we will evaluate the inverse cosine function values using the reference triangles shown here below, where each inverse cosine function value is equal to an angle on the closed interval from zero to pi radians, which means in standard position, the angle would be in this interval here from zero to pi radians, including both endpoints. The first expression is inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two, which again is equal to the angle in this interval that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two. Looking at the reference triangles below, notice the cosine of three degrees, or pi over six radians, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which gives us positive square root three divided by two. We're looking for the angle in this interval that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two. So the angle is not 30 degrees or pi over six radians, but this angle is the reference angle in the second quadrant where cosine is negative. So the next step, we sketch a reference angle and corresponding reference triangle using 30 degrees or pi over six radians, which means the terminal side of the angle we are looking for would be this ray here, where again the reference angle, this angle here is 30 degrees or pi over six radians. And now let's sketch the reference triangle. Because we are in the second quadrant where x is negative and y is positive, we label the opposite side positive one, the adjacent side negative square root three, again because x is negative, and the hypotenuse positive two. Notice how this reference triangle does give a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two, and therefore the angle we are looking for has the initial side along the positive x-axis, the terminal side along this ray, with a counterclockwise rotation, the angle is 150 degrees, or in radians, 5 sixths pi radians, which we can determine by taking 180 degrees and subtracting the reference angle of 30 degrees, which gives us 150 degrees, or pi radians minus 1 sixth pi radians, which gives us five six pi radians. Next we have inverse cosine of square root two divided by two, which is equal to the angle in this interval that has a cosine function value of square root two divided by two. This cosine function value should remind us of the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle shown here, but it can also be helpful to rationalize the numerator of this cosine function value, so let's also do that. If we have the square root of two divided by two, to rationalize the numerator, we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of two. This gives us two divided by two square root two. Two divided by two simplifies to one, leaving us with one divided by square root two. So we can also rewrite this as inverse cosine of one divided by square root two. And now looking at the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle, Notice the cosine of 45 degrees, or pi over four radians, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which does give us one divided by square root two. And because the given cosine function value is also positive, the angle we are looking for is 45 degrees, or pi over four radians. So this is equal to 45 degrees, or pi over four radians, or one fourth pi radians. So because the given cosine function value is positive, the angle had to be in the first quadrant, and therefore we did not have to sketch the reference angle or the reference triangle, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. We would sketch a 45 degree reference angle in the first quadrant. This would be the terminal side of the angle we are looking for, where the reference angle, this angle here, is 45 degrees, or pi over four radians, and this would be the reference triangle. Because we are in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive, and therefore both legs are positive one, hypotenuse is square root two. Notice how this reference triangle does give a cosine function value of one divided by square root two, which means the angle we are looking for in the first quadrant has its initial side along the positive x-axis, terminal side along this ray. With a counterclockwise rotation, notice how the angle is the same as the reference angle of 45 degrees, or in radians, pi over four, or one fourth pi radians. Next we have inverse cosine of negative one half. Going back to the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, notice how the cosine of 60 degrees or pi over three radians is equal to one half, but we are given a cosine function value of negative one half, 
which means 60 degrees or pi by 3 radians is the reference angle in the second quadrant for the angle we are looking for since cosine is negative in the second quadrant. So now we sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees or pi by 3 radians in the second quadrant and therefore this would be the terminal side of the angle we are looking for well, the reference angle, this angle here, is 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. Let's sketch the reference triangle. Again, we are in quadrant 2, where x is negative and y is positive. The opposite leg would be positive square root of 3. The adjacent leg would be negative 1. Hypotenuse positive 2. Again, notice how this reference triangle does give a cosine function value of negative 1 half, which means the angle we are looking for has the initial side along the positive x-axis, the terminal side along this ray, with a counterclockwise rotation, the angle is 120 degrees, or two-thirds pi radians, which we can determine by taking 180 degrees and subtracting the reference angle of 60 degrees, or pi radians minus one-third pi radians, which gives us two-thirds pi radians. The last expression is inverse cosine of negative one. We will not be able to evaluate this using the reference triangles. We will have to use the unit circle or our knowledge of the graph of the cosine function. This is equal to the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of negative one. On the unit circle, x equals cosine theta, and therefore if this is a unit circle, this is the point where the x-coordinate is negative one. The order pair for this point would be negative one comma zero which means this is the terminal side of the angle we are looking for. This is the initial side. With a counterclockwise rotation, the angle is pi radians, or 180 degrees. Or if we analyze the graph of the cosine function only over the interval from zero to pi radians, which is this yellow interval here, notice how the cosine function value is negative one at this point here where the angle is pi radians, or 180 degrees. I hope you found this helpful.